Hey guys, welcome back to Daniel's Tech World on YouTube. My name is Daniel Rosal, and just to forewarn folks, I go through my tech interests, and the current tech interest is after getting all my optical media library in into some kind of a proper organizational system at last. I'm getting around to organizing the rest of my home office and my uh, the equipment for my videography business and basically everything I own. I'm using a very, very nice open source software called Homebox, which I've been very, very impressed by. Uh, and I'm currently in the process of inventorizing, putting all my stuff in. Now, if you follow me, if you've been following this channel, uh, you probably got the idea that I'm very much into backups. And whenever I'm using, the reason I guess I'm into backups or one of the reasons is having used Linux and open source for many years, you learn the hard way that it's quite easy to break stuff uh, when you have full control over what you're doing. So it really kind of underscores the importance of uh, creating backup. So today I'm going to be kind of going through what I would regard as a good, making some suggestions for how you can uh, back up uh, this uh, utility. So the first thing to do we can to talk about is the actual container. And uh, I'm going to call this, I think, backup backing up Homebox on Synology. So it's aimed at Synology users who are uh, using it this way. If you're running it in the container manager, uh, you can back up firstly the container. Now, the issue here is that the container is the container. It's just the uh, kind of core uh, files that are making this run. But the recommended installation on Synology creates a data folder, which is where the user data is stored. So that's really what we want to go for as our backup target and not the container. But I thought I would show anyway, just in case you want to do both for whatever reason. Select the Homebox container, go into Action, go into Export, and you have two options here. One of them is going to export just the container settings. That's going to be like the bare minimum stuff, the port settings, and the container contents and settings will do the container as well as the settings. But if your data is not stored within the container, and that's why uh, it's, that's why it's uh, set up like this, uh, then this is not going to actually back up the all-important contents we want to back up. So this is just if you want to do this as maybe as an additional step, but uh, it's not the way to back it up. The way to back it up is firstly to find out where your data is, and uh, you can see if you ever forget the path uh, that you uh, gave it by inspecting the container. So by clicking on the details option, you're able to see some details of the container, and you can see the volume uh, where it's storing the user data here. Uh, volume one, which is by default the root of your entire storage pool on your Synology NAS. Then there is the default Docker folder created when you install uh, the container manager. Then there is a folder called Homebox, and then we have a folder called Data. So uh, the first thing I would do, and this is really not kind of part of the backup approach, but I recommend because whenever you're backing up, you want to know what's in your backup, because if you need to restore from it, you want to know what's going to be available. So the first thing that I'm going to do, or the next thing I'm going to do rather, is take a look at this folder and take a look at exactly what kind of data uh, the app generates in the user uh, user data area. So the very easy way to do this is open up your file station, go into the volume called Docker, and then you'll have a folder called Homebox. So open up that, and then you can see uh, the data that the app is storing. So we can see that there are three different files. There is homebox.db, it's a uh, db file. There is homebox.db-shm, homebox.db-wal. And we can see by just inspecting the size of the files that the first, the first one is the biggest, it's 3.9 megabytes in size. These three files here basically comprise the database for the app. So we have the uh, the actual container, which is the app, the build of the app that gets periodically updated. And then in this folder, we need, we need only two things. We need a database for storing all the details of our assets. And we also need a folder for storing the content that we add. If you're using Homebox, and I'll just go into my Homebox here, there's probably, we can find uh, an example of something. Here we go, like this... Uh, XLR cabling I've added here. So there's the ability to add images into the items. Now those get stored in the system somewhere, of course, and the, they're stored in this folder, which is the top level of Homebox. So double clicking here, there's a folder called documents. It'll add group stuff according to the type. And uh, it's just worth doing this again. I just, just showing all these steps just to kind of understand 
how you're going to be creating the backup or what backup you're going to be doing. And all the data is here. So we can see if I open up some of these images, we can see that these are the images that I've uh, committed into Homebox. So this is good. Uh, we want to back up all the stuff. We want to back up the database and we want to also back up all this, uh, all these images. There's a number of approaches you can do to actually do the backups. Now, the first one is I'm going to show is a very crude manual methodology. Let's say your home box lives on the NAS and you want to take one copy of your backups onto your oper the computer you're accessing it from. So what you can simply do is uh, create an archive out of the entire home box folder. Uh, you can compress to homebox.zip. And uh, this should actually be quick because it's such a lightweight application. My recommendation would be just to write the date. Uh, so this is the 15th, 150224. And you've just created uh, 1.6 megabytes. It's super, super light. A um, An image, if you will, or a snapshot of your Homebox user data on that specific date. And you can do this multiple times. The more sophisticated methodology would be to create a script for doing this periodically. So what you need to do here is know the path of the data, which is going to be volume one forward slash docker forward slash homebox. And then you can do simply some kind of a script that will copy this uh, file periodically. You can set this to run once a week uh, over to another folder. You might create a, as uh, you know, something called homebox backups on the NAS. And that'll just kind of do a periodic uh, copy. You can, you can do rsync as well you get the idea you can script this that would be a little bit more uh, sophisticated if you're happy to go the more manual approach and just do this kind of manually periodically something you could do is create a dedicated volume for for housing these so you can create one called homebox snapshot or you could even do one called homebox backup for while you're at it and then put the container images as well uh, create that and then you can just store your zip files in this periodically you might be wondering what's the point of what would be the point of storing a backup of something on the NAS also on the NAS on the same physical machine the answer would be the backups the ideal thing is using them for restores so you could create your uh, snapshots of your data at certain points in time just to protect against a situation that you might have uh, some kind of of uh, malicious data over or accidental data deletion or stuff like that and you might you might want to roll back the data in the system to what it existed at at a certain point in time if that's what if that's what you want to use for backups and i think this is a pretty legitimate approach and uh, you can just store those snapshots to define them loosely into a folder like this i've gone back into my container manager i put my user data there and i'm going to put my container image uh, into this folder and then this will export the container image if you want to do both and keep snapshots for a certain date and again i'm aware all this can be scripted i'm just showing the kind of manual method firstly now we have two folders in the home box backup i've created one folder called user data snapshots and i marked the date there i always think that's important in backups for snapshots to understand when it was done you can see my docker container backup has just completed so under container image i have this file here for homebox.s and syno.txz it's only it's incredibly light 11.3 megabytes so i'm just going to prepend the date 150224 uh to that uh, and now we have both the container image and the user data snapshot and again all this could be rolled into one script very easily finally if you've learned nothing from me on this youtube channel it's that the bare minimum backup approach requires an off-site backup and an on-site backup. Unfortunately, because Synology is basically, the NAS is an amazing backup device that has thought of little options for kind of all these things. So Cloud Sync is a very easy utility to set up. You can just point it to a cloud, whether you're using S3 or Backblaze, or just to keep things simple for this example, your Google Drive. And you can create a Cloud Sync and you can actually use this to push your backups up to the cloud. So the way I'm going to do this is for my local path, I'm going to give it the folder where I've uh, just put my container snapshots as well as the actual data file. I'm gonna set that as my local path and I've already configured before I started my remote path to a backups, fo backups folder and I just created a folder in my Google Drive for my Homebox snapshots. I just need to then go in when I'm selecting my local folder, I've got my home box backup, I've got my two subfolders, the container image and the user data snap snapshots. You don't want to select either of these, you want to go for the root level folder and then uh, select that. And now we want to change the sync direction to upload local changes only because uh, we don't, we're not going to be pulling anything down from the remote just when we change create new or overwrite previous snapshots we want to push, push those up and you can do other things like uh, select a schedule as well 
if you're going down the scripting approach and your your backup script is going to run once a week, you can accordingly set the cloud push job to run about once a week. Alternatively, uh, you could just leave this off and then whenever your uh, your local backup script runs and updates the, uh, the uh, user data that's stored there, this will push the updated data up to your uh, up to your cloud. Finally, just verify everything's good. We're backing up to my the Google Drive. The local path is Homebox backup folder. Remote path is a corresponding folder I've created. We're not scheduling anything. And if you want to go really granular, we can uh, choose specifically whether we want to sync or not sync a specific folder. Like I might say, well, I don't really actually need to push the container images to my offsite. I just want the user data snapshot. So I'm going to go there. And then I click on done and we are finished, guys. So that is, I would suggest, a good basic backup strategy you can have in place if you're hosting Homebox on a Synology NAS to recap on what we did. Firstly, uh, we uh, copied the user data over to a, a folder. And uh, as I said, you can create a script to do that process. Uh, we also did a container export just for the just for the sake of being thorough. And finally, we used a cloud sync in order to create an offsite sync job up to a cloud uh, from our local data. And we just need to either have a script running or periodically take snapshots of our data in order to make all this work. Thanks for watching today. Hope this was helpful. Until the next video.